So after our morning of editing and finishing up episode 66, today is a new day. So I hope you're all starting out your day brilliantly, beautifully, with gratitude in your heart. Because some days I have to admit, I really just don't want to do anything. And guess what? It's a rainy day here. So let me just show you a little bit of what we got going on in town. It's a chilly morning, it, the wind is a blowing, and it's drizzling rain. You just want to snuggle up in bed and enjoy the time with a nice latte and a movie and maybe a book. Enjoy. Cuddle. Comfort. Mmm. Butter up, buttercup. <laughs> okay, so did my practice. The sun is coming out. It's kind of like... It's teasing, so we may just get a little walk on with Buddy, but believe it or not, it's chilly outside. It's 76 degrees in the house, and all I have is my sweatpants, and I'm chilled. But I've been going through these temperature changes, like cold, hot, hot, cold, night sweats. Um, I've been detoxing. Uh, I know a lot of it's stress, and uh, you know I have to remind myself from day to day to be kinder on my own mind because I can hypercriticalize, you know, I can, I'm just super, super um, hypersensitive to certain things and there's, my physical body is something that when I start to see changes, I start, my mind starts to go. So that's what I've been dealing with and I'm continuing to be in that mode of self-care and so I want you all to know we're all human and there are moments when you have to remind yourself Maybe it's not just me, but collectively you're picking up what other people around you, what the collective world, country, society, culture, wherever you are is going through. That's how sensitive we are as beings. We are energy. And the energy, it's, it's all connected. So like if you look at everything, you are not separate from the wall or the picture. Just because you touched it, even without what you perceive as touch, energetically we're all connected. So it's just something to consider that when we go into periods of deep rest, depression, it's just possible it's because something else is touching upon an old wound, it's bringing it up, and that's how we heal. And so when we go and we recognize, oh, something's coming up, it's all good. Honor it, feel it to heal it, that's the point because that means you're human and stop trying to suppress, suppress, depress, whatever, shove away whatever it is that's coming up because the moment you, you make the conscious effort and decision that I am going to face this head on, I'm ready for change, I'm done with that, the sun comes out. Sun will come out tomorrow, tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. Just thinking about tomorrow. It's right now. It doesn't exist on another planet anywhere. Okay, so we're going to make a smoothie. I'm craving matcha. Matcha, matcha, matcha. Because uh, matcha is very good antioxidants, okay? And there's something I like to mix whenever I do teas or coffees. Gynostemma, especially for you ladies out there. Gynostemma is extremely beneficial. This is my little container of matcha. These are these, these beautiful little jars that I got when I lived in Italy. These are um, Bormioli's. Bormioli Ros Rocco. Love them, they're just so pretty. I like texture, I like design, I like detail. Um, that's why I think I'm very much, you know, like very fashion oriented. So the first things, we're gonna put a tablespoon of the gynostemma in the pitcher first. A heaping tablespoon, by the way, because this stuff is like the bomb diggity for balancing your hormones and all that, which I hadn't been taking in a while. So we're gonna play with that. 
We're gonna take five dates because you know five is my magic number. Ah, how you liking our blogs? Our video blogs, our vlogs. So I know I'm behind, it's all good. You know when you see this one, you're gonna be like, hmm, what day was that? And I'm hoping, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling like talking about the ayahuasca. So while I'm cleaning these dates, instead of sitting down and really talking about it, I'll just kind of touch upon some things. Because Mother Ayahuasca, Grandmother Ayahuasca, um, she continues to work with you. Plant medicine does not just stop because you finish the, the so-called ceremony. Energetically, she's with you. First time, every time. Second time, all the time. Third time, continuing time. So, uh, I can tell you the ceremony. It was powerful. I was saying how the first time I did it, The first time I did ayahuasca this past summer was just before my mom went into the hospital and we had to go up for her, what we didn't know was going to be her death. And um, I couldn't put words to it. It was unique. It was very powerfully deep, which a lot of my meditations have been lately. Um, but, or not just my meditations, but dream state, because normally when I dream, I dream very vividly. Premonitions. Memory. So vivid I can recall the dreams afterward. But one of the problems with working with social media, I'm going to tell you right now, Working with blue screens, LEDs, the blue light, as they say, is it, um, it messes with the function of your pineal gland, your third eye. Okay. Pituitary pineal gland, right? It makes this L shape through the crown, come through the pineal gland, out through the pituitary. Um, it, it hampers your psychic and intuitive abilities. Hence why they put fluoride in the water. Hence why social media has become such an epidemic, um, creating co problems because it messes with your hormone, hormones. Hormones. Um, ultimately, if your hormones are off, your moon, your dopamine, your serotonin are off because that's what it hinders and hampers. Um, and all of your endocrine secretions, all your glandular, right? As a result, it imbalances you, right? You can't function, you're, you're not gonna be in tune. When you're out of tune, you can't tune in. Let's just say that. Antennae are like, zip, 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 zip. Remember, the, remember the rabbit ears on your, on your TV? So my cognitive abilities have been kind of dampened, let's say. They're not gone, They're j I just notice that even I feel a little wonky and not stable like I normally do. So with that, I still get the essence and the sense and the feel and the knowing. I didn't know that what basically my last ayahuasca, my first ayahuasca experience was doing. It was preparing me. And it, it definitely prepared me in a way I didn't expect um, in addition to my teacher trainings and just the support in the community that I work with as it is. Ultimately, I was able to, what I consider, hold space and be there, be the strong one um, during that time. And I'm still working on my own process, my own healing. It's not like it just happens overnight. Oh, yeah, you get over it. You know, so-and-so died. Uh, not when it's your mother, people. Not when it's somebody that's close. As women, it's, it's a very much, it's a generational transition. It's a passing off of the torch, the flame, the matriarchy. Um, if you don't understand what that's like, I, I, because you haven't gone through it, trust me, you will when you do, if you're in that space, if you're in an awareness. Um, we women, it becomes that I'm now what my mother was to me. 
our grandmothers are past. Now it's I'm the mother. I'm the matriarchy. I'm the line. Yes, I have sisters alongside of me, but we are that generation now that the forward can only look back to on the living in the existence, right? So it's a huge, like it's a role and you don't even psychologically recognize or rationalize it or maybe even register it. It's just like, whoa, something powerful just shifted, something happened. And you have to kind of own and accept and be with it. And so it's this transformation, this transition that you're going through that now my mom's gone. Yes, I know she's with me in my heart, my soul, energetically. I know that. But I still grieve. I still feel her loss. And I miss her immensely. And I can have moments of tears and moments of joy and, and memory and nostalgia um, and melancholy. This next ceremony, part of me wanted to go in with that knowing my mom was going to greet me, I was going to get to spend time with her. Um, I had some other kind of ideas and then I had to kind of surrender it all anyway. So the first dose of the ayahuasca ceremony, let me first put it this way. The first time I did it, we were a total of five. This time we were a total of eight. All significant numbers. Five, wait, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, we were five people the last time and eight this time five is transformation eight is infinity is um, abundance and it's in again infinity right life continues it goes on um, it was also special because Haru's birthday was a couple days prior and he considered this his celebration with all of us the previous night was over 20 people I think they said 25 people and it was a lot of energy, chaotic and all that. And um, I felt it. I felt it in a way I didn't expect or think I would. I, the flavor was different, but still tasty. It was palatable. It didn't kick in right away. And as far as time, you can't measure time. I didn't have my clock or phone on. Everything gets turned off. But when the hape came around and she said she used the jeringa, um, which was an invisibility cloak, um, just to keep external spirits. And I, I personally have kind of a mixed feeling about all that stuff. The idea that these negative entities, these beings, this, that, and the other. I do believe if it's in your belief system, you're going to experience whatever you believe. Um, when I was younger... I was more influenced by other people's ideas and beliefs about negative beings and entities. Not so much my experience personally or even feeling it. Uh, sometimes, yeah, I'd feel discomfort around me, but I can honestly say there have been very few situations where I felt like there was a negative being. Yeah, uncomfortable, uh, strange, but not like, oh, there's something out to get me or take over me. Or, or, or take over my being or my body. So, um, yeah, that hop, it kicked my ass. I'm just going to say that. Because as soon as she blew it up my nose, and it, then the next one I was like, whoa. And I just went down into fetal position um, after purging. I mean, I sat with it. I grounded it. But, boy, it got to the point where, yes, I purged it. I didn't want to smell anything hape or ayahuasca related. It was like everything made me nauseous. So I rolled into this fetal position. She asked if I was ready for the eye drops, the sananga. And I, I couldn't move. I'm like, I don't, if I move, even with my arm and my, my neck being all cocked into the wrong positions, I wasn't comfortable. I couldn't stay still. I, I couldn't move because I had to stay still. And that's something in my mind that sometimes I feel like if I move, it'll totally shift everything. I won't feel so good. And I think that really comes from numerous experiences of being hungover or drunk to the sickness point of just being like, no, don't move me. If I move, I'm going to vomit. You know, like if anybody else out there can re relate to that one. Um, that was kind of the, the memory that it kind of felt like was that old 
toxic, I'm drunk, into uh, toxic is how it felt. It felt really like I was, I was in a toxic state. And so um, I had a lot of visions, a lot of images this time that were more crystal clear. Because initially when I started out, we were discussing some different things and I said, you know, there was a time I had such vivid dreams and I was sharing what I just shared about how my dreams have been a little bit more elusive, um, not as vivid or memorable, but I remember essences. I mean, I still get visuals that are vivid, but not like they were. So um, I got some beautiful sacred geometry and colors and, and landscapes and places and um, universal like stars and galaxies and beautiful beautiful images that I just you know because you close your eyes and that's what you whatever you see and you know I astral travel I astral project my I, I do a lot of that in my sleep and I went places but I couldn't explain where and I just I stayed in my body mostly because I felt this feeling and I was trying to be with that feeling, conscious or unconscious. And eventually when they said, let's go outside, I was like, okay, I know I need to move. I need to move. And so I was able to force myself to stand up, to get up and go outside and slowly make my way over to the blanket under the tree. And then I laid down on my back and she gave me the Sananga eye drops. And they were doing calls to this, the alligators. And I'm like, oh, please don't bring the gators in. That's the last thing I want to have to deal with is running from a gator. Um, but no, it was kind of beautiful because you could hear it off in the distance uh, doing the call back. Um, but looking up into the tree and the sparkles and the... It was lovely. It was, it was much more pleasant being outside. I enjoyed being outside and getting that fresh air. When we went back inside, and I knew I wanted to do a second round, I knew I needed to kind of balance what was going on that felt so nauseous and icky in my system. And I'm glad I did. And we did a second dose of the ayahuasca, which came from a different source. There were two different bottles, two different brews. And this one was much more concentrated and much more powerful. And I said, mm, can I just have like maybe half of it? Because I didn't feel I needed a huge dose, especially hearing that it was concentrated. So I took a smaller dose and then I asked for the hape that was for the body pain and the healing because um, I felt like my body needed some physical healing, especially with all the pain I was experiencing in addition, prior even. And so she gave me that hape and I sat with it, I rooted in like the tree, I, I visually grounded myself, I sat with it and it felt much more calm, soothing, um, like I said it balanced me out. I knew I felt the need to move forward and go through that uh, and maybe I needed to sit in that nausea to, to really come into a state of recalibration balance and that sometimes that's what we do in life. You have to step out of that comfort that, oh, everything's so hunky-dory, oh, I gotta go through chaos to come back to, ah. Contrast of life, people. If you don't swing on the pendulum, you'll never see what you appreciate, what, you, what feels un, unhealthy, toxic. In order to come back to the neutral, sometimes we have to come out of balance, okay? So, um, I laid back down after I purged and I was feeling comfortable and I just was letting myself relax because at that point they claimed they were closing the ceremony. We were going to go longer and do a third, um, but they felt like it might go till 10 in the morning and some people didn't necessarily want to go that late because um, it went all night. And so when I laid down and at the first point when I did wake up, there were two things that came to me when I woke up. The first, I had had a dream very visually I, that I was physically at an outdoor experience. It was like a thatched roof over an open, like a gazebo-ish kind of deal, I guess you'd call it. And there were a whole bunch of people, a lot of men, 
and we were doing ecstatic dance, okay? Um, and we went from room to room, and there were a couple, an indoor, outdoor, and there was something else that was in there I can't really bring out at this moment. Um, but the other thing that came up was I had this dream where I was in the car with my sister. My sister Lita were in a car. We had gone back in time prior to my mom having the cardiac arrest. I don't know how far back, a day, two, maybe more. And I said, I was looking forward. I was surprising mom. I was showing up to go visit with her. And my sister, it seemed like she wasn't aware that mom had passed. But at some point, she said, oh, mom's so annoying, something such and such. And I said, Lita, but we're getting to be with her while she's alive. And she kind of paused. And then the car pulled up. And mom was walking toward us through a sea of a few people. And as she came to me, and um, I already knew because my mom has a certain way of be behaving. She was like, and I hugged her when we came together. And I just held her. And I said, Mom, I love you so, so very much. And I just smelled her. I could, I could feel her smell her skin, feel her heartbeat and her, the warmth of her, her body and her love. I said, you did the so, you did the best you could. You were the best mom you could ever be. I love you so much. And I don't know for how long that lasted in the dream, but I was just grateful to have that moment with her because I hadn't had that moment for over eight years when I saw her this summer. And that was a gift from mother, the grandmother Ayahuasca on this particular experience. But boy, it still took me pretty much all after, like all day to come back into, whoa, that was a heavy, and thankfully, I had some of Hadi Young's, Debbie Grace's um, Thai coconut curry soup because I drank most of that um, and I ate the majority of it. I kept some for the next day, but that was pretty much my dinner, lunch and dinner, breaking my fast after that experience. But I can tell you, but from the first and this time, if I were to do it again, I would be cleaner in my eating. I wasn't super, I wasn't bad in my eating. It was just, I would have been lighter because the first time I did it, I had been fasting and I was light on my diet. I didn't have a lot of food in my system. Where this time I had food in my system and a lot heavier is what I really mean. So yeah, if y'all have questions or you've ever done ayahuasca, please let me know in the comments. So here's what we're going to do. We have five dates, medjool dates. We have the milk that I showed you the other day. This almond milk, it's vanilla with vanilla. There's four ingredients in this whole thing. Unfiltered water, almonds, sprouted almonds at that, all organic, Himalayan sea salt, vanilla from the vanilla bean. I mean, you can't get any more natural than that unless you're making it yourself. So we're doing eight ounces of this. Uh, we're gonna do a teaspoon of the matcha. I think that's about, there we go. It might be a teaspoon and a half, something like that. Not even, there's about a teaspoon in there. I'm putting horsetail root in here because horsetail root is really good, ladies, for your hair. So, a teaspoon of that. So, two teaspoons matcha, one teaspoon horsetail. We've got nettle root, which, nettle root, again, another great healer. Roots, baby. We're going to the roots today. And a tablespoon of this, a teaspoon, I'm sorry, a teaspoon. And we're going to put some banana in here. Now, since I did ayahuasca, I have not had sugar. 
And I mean, I mean, when I say no sugar, I'm not even doing maple syrup. I'm not doing honey, any of that. Because they recommend you not do sugar. I mean, you can say none of that's processed, but in my opinion, you're, it's not like you're getting it fresh. So the longer anything sits, it becomes a processed product because you're no longer with the live living enzymes that were originally off the hive or maple syrup has to be boiled down to get it in those containers, people. True maple syrup is very, very liquidy and it's a lot thinner in color. We have, let's see how many bananas we have in this. I think we have at least three, three frozen. And then we're gonna put some ginger. Because I have not had ginger and it just popped into my head. Need a little ginger. A little ginger. Let's see. Hey. Buddy's over there scratching. Buddy, stop it, baby. Hey, stop. It's itchy season, just in case you're wondering. What does that mean? It means the fleas love when it's wet like it is out outside. They especially like that transitional temperature because it's not too hot for them. And they especially they like a warm body. So they will be jumping on your pets. And here in Florida, fleas are no joke. You do not mess with fleas. Buddy has been significantly better since I got him on the Trifexis. He's even put on some weight, which I noticed last night. And I don't know. I don't know. Check with my dad if he wasn't. But see, he hasn't been with my dad for over a week or for a week now. Yeah, a week. Gosh, it's been that long since I got back. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it. Time's flying. It's kind of like with Tom. You know that uh, today's the 15th. He's been gone now a month. He left here on the 16th of last month. And I miss his happy butt. So. Alrighty. So we're going to whip this up. We're going to add some coconut water to it as well. No sugar for your belly. I wanted it hot earlier, but then I decided I'm just going to make it this way. And if I want hot, I can always add hot after. So, let's whip it up. the gynostema in there what I do with the gynostema is I have to blend it longer so it breaks everything down mmm that's what I'm talking about that's exactly what I was looking for today mmm you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna add more water make it a little bit more like a mo uh, mocha like a frothy here's what we're gonna do and we're gonna add a little bit more vanilla bean I'm not even using these these omakas because you know what? There's alcohol in these. I decided I'm not even going to use this. So yeah, there is... Oh, wait a minute. This one says glycerin. No, it doesn't. 6.9% alcohol. See? Gotta be careful. Read your ingredients, people. Just never know. So that's probably about an eighth of a teaspoon I just put in there. All right, water time. Yay! Whip it up! Whip it up! I think I might need a little more water even than that.
Now, there's something I just remembered while we're talking, or I'm talking. Huh. Mm. That is exactly what I needed. I have this Euphoria tea that Tom got last year. It's supposed to be DMT tea. And I totally forgot about it until just now. And when I said I wanted something warm, I think what I'll do is I'll make up some of this Euphoria tea for afterward. So, before I pour it, I'm gonna switch this one more time. And now we're going to, voila, pour it up. Two, three, something. Listen. You ever have that happen where you know you had something? Oh, it's probably in. Hold that thought. I forgot I had this in my other bag. I'll clean that up. <laughs> but without further ado, mm -hmm. Pouring it up, whipping it up, it's a matcha latte. Oh. Because you know. Matcha, matcha, matcha! Mmm. Yummy, yummy, yummy in my tummy. Buddy and I are getting ready to take a walk, and he is so excited, he is sitting in out that door. He's like, got that tail of wagon. Let's go, buddy boo! This bunny's gonna hoppin', hoppin' down the street with my buddy and my boo. Boo and my buddy and my buddy buddy boo. Bedroom's done. Boom. On to the kitchen. Hmm. Okay, now it's time for the kitchen fan, which is so icky blue, black and gross. That's why I use the vacuum. Some things you just don't want to touch. That's not gross, icky gross, like seriously. Can you imagine that was all up there? That's all of it. I think I'm done with the kitchen. Time to move on to the living room. It's almost 11.30. All right, last but not least, the final fan. Although those lights could really use some cleaning off. 
It's all good. You get to watch me do this one too. I'm a little meticulous, huh? That was a close call. All I'm gonna say is I was afraid the fan was gonna fall because, well, anyway, you know, I cleaned all the blades, but the whole thing as I was tilting it kinda got unsteady. Whoo, had me sweating bullets. I'm strong, but I don't know how strong I am when I gotta hold on to a fan that's attached to it by electrical wires and live. All right, a little bit more cleaning up. I'm going nine nuts. I can wash my hair still. Okay, so one thing I can assure you is all the fans are clean. <sighs> I feel so much better. <laughs> I think I have dust in my mouth. Yeah. Time to take a shower, hop into my clean bed, and just go night and night. Hope you've all had an amazing day. Hmm. I'm sleepy. I love you. The night is young and the land is low. <laughs> Just look to me and you'll see all is a go.